Hi, I'm Jeff. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to model through dovetails in FreeCAD. This method can also be used for modeling half-blind dovetails as well. I hope you find it interesting. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to model through dovetails in FreeCAD. I'm going to do this by modeling a tailboard and a pinboard. I'm going to assemble them and have a little bit of animation that shows how they come together. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is model the tailboard. So we create a new model, switch to the part design workbench, and then we create a new part, and then a body for it, and then a sketch in the XY plane. I'm going to make the tail board 200 millimeters long by 90 millimeters wide. So I'm just going to simply draw a rectangle around the center point or origin of the sketch and make the rectangle symmetrical around that origin. So to do that, I just select the two points representing the top line of the rectangle and the center line and then use the create symmetry constraint. And then I'm going to repeat that process for the long side. So we select two points and then the center line and use symmetry constraint again. And now I'm just going to set the width of the board, which will be 90 millimeters using the horizontal constraint. And then the length 200 using the vertical constraint. The sketch is green, meaning that it is fully constrained, and now we can go on and model the tails. So we close the sketch, and switch to the axometric view, and then fit screen so I can see the whole lot, and pad it out to be 9 mils thick. I'm going to quickly save that, and we're going to call that the tailboard. Now we're going to model the dovetails and in order to do that we're going to reverse the process and model the pins which we will then remove. So to do that we select the face we want to put the sketch on and we create a new sketch. We're going to bring the external geometry into the sketch so that we can work with it. So we use the Create an Edge Link to External Geometry tool to bring three sides of the board in. And we're also going to include a construction line which represents the baseline of the dovetails. That too will be linked to the external geometry, like so. We'll go back to creating the pins themselves. We're going to use the polyline tool to do that. So we'll create the two half pins on either side. Like so. And in the solver, you'll notice that I have some redundant constraints. This has occurred because I have automatic constraints turned on, and FreeCAD has just added some additional constraints that we don't need. So I'm just going to remove those. And once I've done that, we can continue with the modeling process. Sometimes you'll find it identifies a, another constraint once you remove those, so we just clean that one up as well. Now, at the moment, all we have is a single dovetail 
represented by this section in the middle. In fact, what I want is two. So I'm going to create another pin in the middle, link to the geometry. Because I've only got two tails that I'm going to model, the tails and the pin in the middle are going to be symmetrical around the origin. But when drawing the middle pin in, I've discovered I've got a, another redundant constraint, so we need to remove that just to clean things up. Now that we've got our basic shapes for the tails in place, we need to start constraining it. Now the sides of the two dovetails are going to be parallel to each other, so we can use the create parallel constraint between two lines to set the angle, or at least make them parallel. So we do that for both sides. Then what we do is we use the angle constraint to set the angle of the sides of the tails. What I'm looking to do with these dovetails is I'm going to make them a 1 in 7 grade, which means that they are roughly 9 degrees. So when we use the, the angle constraint, we're going to set that to 99, so it's a little bit over 90 degrees. And on the other side, we'll do the same thing. Set it to 81, because it's chosen the outside. And that has those angles complete. We want this center pin to be symmetrical around the center line, so we can put a symmetry constraint in for that. And the bottom of this pin here is going to be slightly larger than the chisel I'm going to use to remove the pin. And I'm planning to use a 6mm chisel for that, so I'm going to make it 7mm wide. Now that happened because I haven't got things fully constrained yet. So as you can see with the solver we've got three degrees of freedom. That is currently this one here, this one here, and this one here. The baseline of this half pin is going to be the same on both sides, so we set a quality constraint for that. And it's only going to be 5 millimeters long, so we can set that length to 5 mil using the horizontal constraint. And the dovetails themselves are only going to be 9 millimeters long because that's the thickness of the pin board. So we set that using a vertical constraint to be 9 millimeters. And now we're fully constrained and ready to go. So we're going to close the sketch. And now what we're going to do is use the Create Pocket tool to punch out the pins, leaving us the tails. And with this one, what we're going to do is we could use the dimensions and just type in 9, but in this case, I'm going to change the type to be through all, which means it'll push it the whole way through. Hit OK to keep it. Before we save it, I'm just going to change the color of the tailboard so that it is easily identifiable when we assemble it later. So now we're going to move on to modeling the pinboard. So we'll create a new model. Staying in the part design works bench, we're going to create a new part, then create a new body for it, and then create a sketch where we can model it. Again, we're going to use the XY plane, and we're going to make it the same size as the tailboard. So we're going to make it symmetrical around the origin point using the symmetry constraint. We're going to make it 90mm wide, 
and 200 mil long. And now it's fully constrained, so we can close the sketch. Put in an asymmetric view, view fit, so we see the whole thing, and then we're going to pad it out again to 9 millimeters. Now, the pinboard is different from the modeling perspective in that instead of using the large face to model the pins, you have to model it on the end. So we select the face we're going to model on and create a new sketch. Basically just going to repeat the process we've just done to create the, the tails, or the, in this case the pockets for the tails. So we're going to bring in the external geometry, and just for ease of use I'm going to bring in all four sides. I'm then going to use the polyline tool to create two rough looking dovetails. like so and as before we're going to remove any redundant constraints like so now we're going to just start constraining the model so that we can remove the waste again the sides of the tails are parallel so let's do that now using the create parallel constraint tool. We're going to set the angle to be 99 degrees again. We're going to make this gap in between which represents the small pin in the middle symmetrical about the center line and we're going to make the length of it seven millimeters again because that's my smallest chisel and we're going to make the distance on this baseline five millimeters And finally, we're just going to set the length of either of these sides to be the same, which fully constrains the model. And now we're ready to punch out the pins. So you can see that the tails are in place, or the waist for the tails are modeled. Now we're just going to use the pocket tool to create a pocket. And in this case, because we're only taking out a small section we type in the amount we want which is nine millimeters and we'll change the color to something that we can easily see and we're going to save that as the pin board the final part of this demonstration will be to create an assembly where we bring the pin and tail boards together and assemble them and then add some animation to show how it goes together. So let's do that. Create a new model. We're going to switch to the Assembly 2 workbench and we're just going to import our pin board and switch to Axiometric View and then import our tail board. I'm just going to view it, fit that so that we can see it a bit better. And to make life a little easier for us, we're going to rotate the tailboard so that it is 90 degrees or perpendicular to the pinboard. So we use a transform tool and we're going to rotate it around the red axis. And then we're just going to move it away from the 
pin board so that it's, we can show you how to use constraints to bring it together. Just zoom to fit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the constraint system to bring the parts together. So first thing we're going to do is use a planar constraint to bring this baseline of the tailboard into line with the face of the pinboard. We'll zoom to fit so we can see that again. We are then going to constrain this side of one tail to its corresponding side on the pin. And then finally, we're going to constrain the face of the tail into the end of the waist. Bring it together like so. We can see from the assembly that something's not quite right. We can see that the middle pin is either too large or the gap is too small on the tail ball. So to fix this, we just go and check each of the models and make the appropriate adjustment. So first thing we'll do is we'll look at the tail ball. We'll go right down to the sketch representing the pins and we'll have a look, see what it's saying. So we can see here that I've set the widest part of the middle pin to be seven millimeters. So what I want to do is check the pin board to make sure it's the same. So we go right down to the pocket representing the tails and we open that up and I can immediately see my mistake. I've made the narrow part seven millimeters. So all we need to do is remove that constraint and then set a new constraint at the bottom of seven millimeters. Then we save the pin board and we go back to the assembly and we refresh it using the update parts tool. You see that now has corrected it. So it's pretty easy to fix it when the two parts don't quite meet. So I'm going to switch back to the axiometric view and zoom out a bit so we can see the whole thing. And now we'll just add a little bit of animation to show it coming together. So we switch to the exploded assembly workbench. We select the tailboard because that's the one I'm going to animate. And then what we do is we just set the details of the animation. So we're going to animate it. Animation speed is going to be 180 which I've identified earlier as being a nice speed, and we're going to animate it 200 millimeters. Zoom to fit, and then when we hit the play button, see how it animates in and out. Just save that. So as you can see, it's relatively easy to model dovetails and pins in FreeCAD. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, consider giving us a like. And if you didn't, a dislike. Either way, please leave us a comment. If you have any other comments or topic suggestions, please leave a comment below as well. I invite you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you stay up to date with my videos. Thank you for watching.